It's Around the Horn, the show of competitive better. Here's Tony Rielli. 39 minutes and 30 seconds last night for LeBron versus the Timberwolves. He's first in the league in minutes played, and he said yesterday, after Love was out, he'll rest when he retires, which is kind of funny because we've done no fewer than three stories in the last year on him sitting games out for rest. Bill Plaschke, first to you out of the gate. How big of an issue is LeBron's minutes? I think it's a big issue because, for, for one thing, he has more minutes than he's played in the last three years. He's averaged the most minutes. Also, he's been more defiant this year against critics than he has been in the last year. You know, going after Barkley, going after Frankie Ice. It's almost like he's, he's saying, I think he has the whole Golden State Curry thing in his mind. I think he's really trying to, like, lash back at this point in his career and say, hey, I'm bigger than you. I can do this. Nobody believes me. He still has that young, younger mentality, and that's an issue. He almost needs to be protected from himself. But who's going to bench him over there? Nobody's going to bench him. So I think it is an issue moving forward forward him thinking he's immortal and you know and superhuman when maybe he's not Sarah Spain yeah to his point you hear Tyron Lou saying we're not going to run him into the ground while he's saying I'll rest when I retire they're kind of on different pages there but also we've heard LeBron earlier in the season saying I'll rest in January or I'll rest in February well at some point those times when you said you were going to rest are here and if you're deciding not to because the team needs you and even more so with Love out and with J.R. Smith still out another couple weeks he is going to be getting those crazy minutes will it affect him in the east probably not they're four and oh when they're a two seed so even if they drop below the Celtics probably still going to come out of the east okay the question is is how is it going to affect him in the long run when it matters, which, as we know, is likely to be against the Warriors in the NBA Finals. Then that's where the fatigue catches up to you. So let's stop worrying about the East and go all the way down to when they're facing the Warriors. Well, then Monty Jones, do you agree with that sentiment? This is not about the East at all for you? Well, I mean, I'm kind of torn on this. I do think that this is about long term for LeBron. But let us remember, last year they played against the Warriors in the finals, and the Warriors do everything they can to take care of their players and give them all the rest. And it was the Warriors players breaking down, and LeBron James still in shape to do things at the end of Game 7. At the same time, you hear Teron Lue talk about how if you had a machine like this, you'd ride him too. He's not a machine. He's a human. Even if LeBron happens to think that he is a machine, you can't think that all these minutes are necessarily good for him. But we're 14 years into this LeBron James thing now, and we have not seen the breakdown. I understand why people would assume that it's never going to come, but they're not getting anything to me out of trying to win these games in the East. If they could have learned anything from last year, it's racking up wins in the regular season doesn't really matter. I would rest him more. Okay. Kate Fagan. Uh, well, we haven't seen the LeBron breakdown in part because he's operated like a world-class runner in a lot of ways, and that's knowing when he shouldn't do another rep or shouldn't play another minute, being as important as going hard all the time. We have seen LeBron over the years get really close to that red line, but know when to pull back. And so my concern for his minutes this year is in some part what, what Bill mentioned in, is that we've seen a different kind of LeBron this year, and we've seen him look up at the Warriors because of the amount of talent they have at that team and get a little spirited about this season. And I'm concerned that that red line that he's always straddled and know, known exactly where he stood, maybe he pushes it a little far this year because he's, it's personal at this point for in this year for him. Love out six weeks, and, and, and I know, Bill, you just said you think this is an issue, LeBron's minutes. What is the percentage chance they win the East this year for you, Plaschke, right now? 100% chance. They're still going to win the East. That's the thing. He can rest and get off the court, and they'll still win the East. Spain? 100%. Who's going to beat him? You always got a rogue ACL or Achilles. I'm going 90%. Jones? Yeah, I'm going 95 because the rogue, I mean, Kyrie Irving is not exactly the most durable person in the world. If he gets hurt, it does get a little bit. Bacon. Tricky. Going 90%. We've got to see what happens at the trading deadline before we bump that up any higher. Come on, Tonight, go for it, guys. Come on. Home versus Indiana. How many minutes for LeBron? Just yell out a number just so I know what I can mentally prepare myself for so we don't have to have this. 36. Tomorrow. 35. 32. 38. 38. Okay, so everybody thinks less than last night. We'll move on. Let's talk in Zaga, the number one team in the country, 327 days without losing a game. They were barely a one seed in the bracket sneak peek last week. Nigel Williams-Goss, who's got to be a player of the year candidate this year, though nobody seems to be talking about that. Quote, I want the national championship bad to kind of put to rest all the naysayers, end quote. Bomani, have these Zags earned the right to say nay to the naysayers? Or how much doubt do they deserve? 
Well, I mean, it feels unfortunate because this particular team is paying for the losses of teams that were playing like 10 years ago, right? We're doing this because we feel like we talk about Gonzaga every year, and then they go butt so deep in the tournament. But this team is really good. This team is one of the bigger teams that you're going to see in the country, and also the third in the country adjusted offensive efficiency, fourth in the country adjusted defensive efficiency. What is it that you want them to do that they haven't done? The problem they're going to have is a problem they wind up with every year, which is they get through the non-conference slate, they go through the West Coast Conference slate, and none of us have any idea exactly how good they are coming into the tournament because of the competition that they play against. That being said, as good as they've been thus far, yes, we should be looking at them like a legit national championship contender, and they do get to be a bit defiant because who has been better than them this season? Mm -hmm. Okay. And all those efficiency ratings. Sounds like somebody put their money where their mouth is for the Ken Palm ratings. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. How about you, Bomani? Fagan, uh, do they deserve some doubt, or do you think they can be saying nay to the naysayers here? I mean, they have to deserve doubt. They have to deserve like 90% doubt because it's the NCAA tournament. This is a crapshoot. I mean, you've got a team in Kentucky that has like half a dozen NBA players goes into the NCAA tournament with a 40% chance to win and does not win it. So if this Gonzaga team is pinning its hopes on its validity to winning the NCAA tournament, well, that's not a great place to pin what your validity is going to be to the wider world because guess what? You don't have a ton of control over that because of the way the NCAA is structured. And you can have the greatest efficiency numbers that that Bo just pointed out but when you get into that tournament you are less in control of your destiny than we like to make it think or like than we like to think or in other sports that players and teams have so there's a lot of doubt because of the framework of of course but what has to be a realistic goal for this team and this team the final four is something they haven't done in 18 straight trips to the NCAA tournament while having a one seed one year two seed so what has to be a realistic goal for this team Sure, I mean, realistic goal for them should be the Final Four, but we look at Gonzaga in its history in, in the NCAA tournament. You said those 18. They have not underperformed. There's been like five or six seasons where they overperformed, a couple where they underperformed. Overall, this team and this program has p- performed exactly as you would expect it to. And so I'm just saying, to pin your hopes on the Final Four seems like you're out of, you're losing control of the thing that you think is defining Bill, what your do program. you think of what Kate's saying there? I think the Gonzaga's got a lot more control than, than she says. They have the kind of control you need in the tournament. They have two, two seven-footers. They have uh, veterans in the backcourt. They've beaten. They've won at Florida. They've won at Arizona. They've beaten Iowa State. This is a different Gonzaga team than we've seen in the past. Plus, they will stay on the West. They're going to get the number one seed. They will play all their games on the West Coast in the tournament. They won't go very far from Spokane. Uh, I think this, is, this team is legit a national title contender team. I'd, I'd say more than Final Four, probably they ought to get to the finals. This is a finals type of team that I'm looking at right now. Sarah Spain. As great as they look now, as great as the stats that everyone is throwing out now, you have to realize that we've seen a lot of success stories like this before that have failed. Every other team in the history of the NCAA that started out 26-0 or better, none of them have gone on to the title game. The last West Coast Conference team to get to the Final Four, 1957. The last West Coast Conference team to get to the title game and win it, 1956. Gonzaga, 18 straight trips without getting past the Elite Eight. Their 2013 team, number one in the AP poll and got bounced in the round of 32. So all the great accolades, we've seen this happen before where you get over and over and over again all the great stuff that we're seeing right now. The only way to end the doubt and to prove people wrong is to get past where they've gotten over and over again in the past and then been Should stopped. they be so defiant, congrats. though? I mean, you heard Bomani's thing. Sure, why not? Absolutely. But we can be doubtful. In, in a year. They can be defiant and I will we can have be to say this, though. Of course, there was the Indiana team in 1976 that went undefeated for an entire <laughs> season, won it all. Sarah, you, you failed to mention that one team. Bomani after the horn real quick. The question is, in the tournament, can you survive a bad shooting night? Gonzaga's way high on effective field goal percentage on offense, way high on, on defense also. They play good enough defense that I think they can survive bad shooting nights, and that's crucial. Those stats still getting That's a great stat, Bomani. Good job, man. Well, if Plasky says it's a great <laughs> stat, there's another one. Plasky, whose side are you on here? We'll move on. Headline number three, Julian Edelman. Indicating he thinks Jimmy Garoppolo's got that kind of gunslinger confidence that Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers had. Quote, he's got that kind of gunslinger confidence that Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers is going to have. Uh, Bo Monty, how does that comparison grab you? I mean, I guess that's cool. I could have the confidence that Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers has, but it doesn't matter if I don't have the arm and everything else that comes with it. In fact, that level of confidence, it was almost a blessing and curse for somebody as good as Brett Favre. A dude like Jimmy Garoppolo, that kind of confidence could turn you into Jake Cutler really, really quickly. The question is, is he good enough at playing quarterback? We saw a handful of games this year where he looked like he could be good. I don't think we have any real idea of how good he is actually. But having that confidence... It's cool until it's not. 
Sarah, you've got that Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers type of confidence. Uh, what does it say that Edelman thinks that Garoppolo has it? Well, it's not to say that I don't believe that Edelman actually believes what he's saying, but let's just say that there's a possibility he's being a great salesman for his team. He knows that the better Garoppolo looks and the more people say how great he is, the better the bidding war is for him and the more that comes back to his team in the deal. <laughs> Listen, this is like just typical Patriot stuff. No matter how bad they have it, oh, no, they're starting quarterback suspended for four games totally unfairly. Well, look, here's a great tryout for the entire National Football League to see their backup. And now that they've seen him do well, now we're going to throw Throw picks at them and money so we can get him. Everything comes up sunny for the Patriots every Flashy. time. I think this is so funny. Edelman is doing what every professional athlete does. He's looking out for himself. He's thinking, these are the Patriots. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here. Grapple might be traded. I want to go where he goes. I want to have a place to land. I want to start a new bromance with another quarterback. Just you think in that's case, what this is about? You think Edelman's just, trying to get no. off the Patriots right here? No, no, no. He's not, trying, right he's not trying to leave the Patriots, but he knows. No, no, no. I didn't say that, Tony. But he knows He knows how they are. He knows they can get rid of him at any moment now. He wants to make sure all his bases are covered. And again, he's Didn't really you read flabbed. the Tom Brady piece with Peter King, MMQB? He wants to play until he's 45, 50. No, I, I mean, no, he's got this diet. He's saying, got Edelman's thinking they may, Edelman doesn't out. know how long he'll be there. That's all. Okay. I'm, I'm having a hard time following that, but maybe Kate, Kate, Kate agrees with you. I, I don't, but I have my own thoughts on this. <laughs> Here's, when I first read this quote, I actually thought it said more than it did, because maybe, like some other people, I thought he was equating the Rodgers and Favre situation as in that Rodgers being Favre's backup behind a Hall of Fame backup, when he finally got his opportunity, he was going to prove himself the way Rodgers did. And so I was like, oh, is, this, is he saying that Garoppolo has the same level of, of talent as Rodgers, but is just behind an awesome quarterback? But like Bo said, that's not what this quote says. And this quote also says he has the confidence to play like that, not necessarily all of the tools, because whether he has all of the tools is still something that we don't have the answer to yet. Flash, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Uh, I'm going to go back all to I'm you. Saying, I, I all I'm saying is Edelman knows that one day Garoppolo is going to be playing somewhere else. And Edelman says, you know what? One day I'll be playing somewhere else too. Maybe we can play together again somewhere. I want to stay in his good graces. So if the well, i got to say, Bill, I respect like that, that you had the confidence to go back to that discussion. <laughs> Even though it ended in a mute. We're taking a break right here. Buy or sell is next. Buy or sell. Replacing your very Lavaton named Michel Therrien with the equally well Lavaton named Claude Julien again like you did 15 years ago. Julien fired by the Bruins one week, hired by Montreal in the division the next week, who fired Therrien while he was in first place. Bill, buy or sell the Canadians move here. I'm buying this. I was out here in, in, in L.A. several years ago when the Kings hired Daryl Sutter in December and it was a pretty good team, and he led him to a Stanley Cup championship. This can happen in hockey. The Canadians were 1-5-1 one, one in February. Time for a change. It could work. Yeah, we saw with the Penguins as well last year, even firing their coach in December and going on to win the Cup. Now, they weren't a first-place team at the time, but that's to say that sometimes you need a new voice, and if you believe the talent isn't being met by the system. And Claude Julien, it seems, in Boston had the right system and that the players weren't... Uh, weren't executing. So if you bring them into a place that seems to be having success and just needs a change of voice, I think it's a good move. Well, Monty Jones? Well, I buy it because if you're that franchise and you don't feel your coach is getting the team up to expectations and you think there is a better coach who happens to do one of the most important things for that job, speak French. You go and you make the move, and that's what they did. Fagan? I buy it. I buy it because if you look at the Bruins' numbers and their puck possession and other really important statistics in hockey. They were just unlucky so far this season. And so now all of a sudden you've got a coach on the market and you're the Canadians and you're like, this is our chance to upgrade and what you think is an upgrade, then you do it. Well, Monty, you're saying you just need to be able to speak French and you can be the head coach. No, 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 no. You don't just need to be able to speak French. But if you look at who the coaches have been there for about the last 25 or 30 years, it really helps if you can speak French. Mm -hmm. well, we, we looked this up, you know, looking for a team that picked up a coach from another team in their own division or league in the same season <laughs> doesn't happen often 1978 Yankees got Bob Lemon after the White Sox fired him and they fired Billy Martin for one of the many times and that team wound up winning the pennant in the World Series Lamb. Bob Lemon. we'll move on buy or sell too Roger. Tom Izzo says he wants an apology from Dan Dockage for tweet Sparty not only whined but now just dumb couldn't get into UM he is on with we hate Dockage chance last night. Izzo said he would have gone up there and led the chance and embarrassed himself almost as much 
and as bad as Dockage embarrass embarrassed himself. Also, quote, I'm surprised ESPN would let somebody say something like that that works for them. Lot to chew on there, Sarah. Buy or sell Izzo on Dockage. I guess I got to buy it. I mean, for me, I understand that gas baggery is part of the job, but sometimes you have to figure out the mm -hmm. context of said gas baggery. Like when I'm on Izzy in Spain, I'm going to say slightly different things different ways than on, say, Around the Horn, where it's supposed to be more journalistic and you know, fact-based approach. Is that right? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Nobody right. told yeah. me this before. Yeah. I, I was not aware of it. I just yeah. laugh about it on my radio show. I try to be prepared for this. But I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I do think that Twitter isn't quite the same as when you're calling the game. You said those things on Twitter, not during the broadcast. But you do have to bring a voice that people believe is unbiased, which is tough. Bomani Jones? No, Dawkins doesn't owe anybody an apology for this. He went back and forth with folks and was a bit of a jerk about it. But no, this is not something he needs to apologize to anybody for. That's like little brother school complex stuff where you say you couldn't get in somewhere and you think somebody needs to apologize to you for it. Thank you. I buy Sarah Spain being able to get a plug in for her radio show very smoothly there <laughs> on that last bit. Plug between yours. the two, between the two of these guys. The trifecta, Saturdays, 12 to 3, also with Sarah okay, Spain okay. and Jake. Right, 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 Thank you, Tony. Right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, between the two of these guys, I'm buying Izzo. I don't think there needs to be an apology issue, but I think whenever your kid is involved and you, you, you just should not be tweeting, you should not necessarily be standing up as a parent and talking, these should be one of the times where you decide you actually have to stay silent. And talk to some plays at Michigan, and we're talking about Michigan State versus Michigan. Okay, Kate, how about you, Plashke? Uh, I used to have a good radio show, and then their station got sold. But anyway, I, I, I think Doc, I, I think Dockich was there. wrong. I think he's a conduit in his role. And Sarah's right in his role with at, at ESPN and doing what he was doing. It, there is no room for that sort of editorial judgments, no sort okay. of rips. So he was wrong. Just full disclosure here, Bill. Your your station was sold to a Korean uh, language station. Oh, Indian, I think Indian, you should have kept. Oh, it was Indian? Indian? Okay, I was doing it. Yes. I, I think Bollywood. you should have kept doing it in a different language. I honestly think. <laughs> yeah. Respect the time. And, Put in the work. It has sounded the yeah. same. We'll move on. Buy or sell three. Magic Johnson on first take. First take he'd have if you were running the Lakers would be to call Kobe Bryant. Because Kobe understands winning and these players. Bomani, buy or sell that. I got to sell it because when he says Kobe understands these players, I don't know exactly what he means because the one demerit on Kobe Bryant's permanent record always has been does not work well with others. I would never hire Kobe Bryant for a job that involved him working with other people while not dribbling the basketball. Mm. Fagan, how about you? You also shouldn't be hiring your former superstar to come in and cast a shadow under your, your over your younger guys who are trying to create their own identity. If this is a guy you if you want to bring back Kobe once the new Lakers have established their identity, great, but not right away to make those guys feel like they can't set their own foundation. Flashkey. Yeah, and everybody's assuming Kobe would even want to come back. No, he's so far gone from all this, he might come back for a visit. No, the first call he needs to make is to a sharp player personnel guy. Try to find some guru to get in there, not Kobe Bryant. Interesting, you don't think Kobe would come back because we had heard him say after one of the big blowouts that I'm just a phone call away. I, I can yeah, he'd himself. visit, he'd visit, but he doesn't want to be Spain? a make a role here. First of all, I hope Kate doesn't get muted for anything I say. Like, you muted me a couple points when she was talking inexplicably. Well, I'm glad you're watching. But I got to say, I think it's a great idea to have Kobe come back because they're not saying an office job where he's in there every day. It's as amorphous as the role that Magic Johnson has gotten so far, which is to say we don't know exactly how much he's going to be doing and when. And Kobe could come back and give these guys some insightful points without being there on an everyday basis where it's a problem. Sarah Spain, this is, uh, I think, show 40 for you today. And uh, you learned a valuable lesson. Self-promotion is the main call of the mute button. Flashy, Spade, Don, Jones, Fagan. Showdown next. Yo, everybody get up. Everybody get up. Everybody needs to understand that I'm more than simply a hype man for this rap group. Just like Geico is more than just a company that can save you money. Geico also has fast and friendly claim service so they can help you when you need it most. And while I do love being a hype man, I also love reading for children's audiobooks. Like little Bo Peep, she lost the sheep, and she don't know where to find them. Yo! Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Now that I've robbed Clash in Spain of a win today, Jones and Fagan in showdown. NHL rule 40.3. Repeating, of course. Deliberately applying physical force to an official in any matter comes with an automatic 10-game suspension. Does Duck Antoine Vermette deserve 10 games for slashing at the linesman last night, Bomani? I mean, if that's the rules, it's a no-brainer. You can't really do a whole lot of smoothing with hitting people with sticks, especially in that game. you got to draw the line that you can't hit the ref with the stick no matter what. 
Period. Yeah, you draw the line at even lifting your stick at all to hit an official. It's not really how hard he hit him, because he didn't hit him that hard. It's simply the motivation and the emotion that has to take place to even go there. So you guys agree. We'll split the points and move on. Showdown two, Tom Brady. There he is. <laughs> Bet paid off. Atlanta Zoo named the baby animal Tom Brady. The animal they named, per rule of the bet, a Madagascar hissing cockroach. Kate Fairfell. It's fall, and it's fall because Tom Brady wouldn't hiss. Okay, Tom Brady is very placid. He's very straight-laced. He doesn't get angry under pressure. He would never latch out and give away his nah, power yeah, like nah, that. Yeah, nah, nah. It's fair because cockroaches are hard to kill, and Brady demonstrated him to be as such. But anybody who knows the <laughs> Atlanta Zoo knows there's only one name we respect at the Atlanta Zoo, and that's the homie Willie B. Rest in peace to Willie B. <laughs> Y'all don't know what it means, but there's people listening right now who I don't know what it means. I plead ignorance, but, but um, I'm giving you the point on the Tom Brady don't die line, so that's good enough for me. Show him space time. They don't know about Willie B, man, but we know about Willie B. Anyway, as we were doing this show, we come to find out that Draymond Green was quoted in talking about Jim Dolan and Charles Oakley, saying that Jim Dolan has shown a slave master's mentality. We let you know this as it'll be part of the news, and I say to Draymond, thank you for making my life incredibly difficult. Do you realize how many people are going to call me up to ask me to talk about slavery, only get mad at me when I actually start talking about slavery? Good luck to everybody in the business talking about this one. No, I won't be a guest on your show. <laughs> okay, I guess that's one way to no. to not talk about it. Twenty minute hour break. We'll see you tomorrow. Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison here to tell you Geico has more than just great savings, much more. Yes, while Geico could help you rack up more moolah faster than you can say metamorphosis, they've also been the fastest growing auto insurer for more than ten years. That's more like it. Furthermore, Geico has fast and friendly claim service. That might seem like an oxymoron, but it's not. All the more reason to say no other auto insurer has more more than Geico. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more.